Hi, welcome to Simple Confident Cooking. This is Anna, and I started this show uh, series because I want to show you how to um, kind of cook beyond recipes and using recipes as your inspiration, but really kind of creating your own thing um, as with recipes as guidelines. And we're going to start with French onion soup because it's one of my fall favorites. And because it's something that's really easy to make um, if you're meat eater, vegetarian, vegan, it has so many different variations. And it also is um, something that I cook a lot when I have hardly any ingredients in my kitchen. So <laughs> we're going to start with onions, obviously. And um, when you look at a normal recipe, you're going to see um, one onion. So this is one onion, this is one onion, but this is a very large and this is a very small. So obviously they're looking for something kind of in the medium, medium of that. Um, so we'll go with the white onion. And if I'm making this soup for me and my husband, I would probably plan for about two and a half onions each if we were making this for a uh, main course. And um, this is my favorite way to break down an onion, so I'm going to show you. Um, cut off the top and bottom, cut it in half, and then there's this really papery layer, and then there's kind of a thin layer in between where the real onion starts, and it's really easy to just pull that off and do your onion that way. Um, I found this to be the fastest way to cook onions. I have no idea how to get rid of it um, making you cry. So fortunately, this isn't a spicy onion. <laughs> Um, then I just start with one side of it and we go down on the side and I get to the middle I go over again and then we'll do that again with this other side so once you hit right about the middle of the onion we'll turn it over and go again so um, all good stoop starts with butter I think in my personal humble opinion <laughs> and um, I would use probably um, maybe two tablespoons for every um, one or two onions. Um, you can also easily use a really buttery olive oil um, if you're not wanting the dairy in this. And so we'll um, start with our butter here and then we're just going to add our onions. So I have um, chopped some onions ahead of time so um, what we'll do is I like kind of a combination. I like it a little bit sweet. And uh, so I, if you have like Maui sweet onions, a lot of sweet onions, those work really well. Um, and I like kind of a variety because it adds color and adds interest in the flavor too. So I have some white onions, yellow onions, red onions. I'll kind of add those in here too. Very good. So basically you're just going to kind of start sauteing the onions. I have a little smaller pot than I would use at home for this process. But uh, what you're looking for is um, as the onions begin to cook, it's going to start building up a juice. And that's what really ultimately flavors the um, soup for you. So you're just going to wait for these to really kind of cook down a little bit. Um, for the broth, I really like um, I really like using bouillons. This is one of my favorite ones. It's um, better than bouillon. They have it vegetarian and beef. I'm using beef today. Um, traditionally, as beef broth, it's always better to make it from scratch, but uh, it takes a little bit longer. And realistically, it's not always what you have on hand. Um, we'll, we'll we'll teach you how to do broth another day because it is really easy and fun to have on hand. But um, do it this way today. So as this cooks a little bit, very good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, start with a spice ball. Um, you can just put your flavors into the soup, but I like the spice ball because um, it kind of helps to not have the the texturally of um, texturally, that's not a word, <laughs> but um, it'll help you to um, just have the onion and the, the broth and not have kind of weird um, textures outside of that. Um, so what we'll do is um, some fresh thyme. We'll put that in there. And I like um, bay leaves. So I'll put maybe two of those in here. 
and uh, I like I like to use some peppercorns. Uh, you also could just put cracked pepper in there, but um, again, just kind of for the consistency of how it looks, I like I like to put the peppercorns in here. And and then we'll use a, just a little bit of salt with the onions. Depending on the um, broth you use, you may or may not want to salt your onions because um, it may just depend on the saltiness of the broth that you're using. So we'll put in um, probably about a tablespoon or so of this. Um, it looks like that. <laughs> um, so we'll kind of add that flavor in. And this should already start uh, making a pretty good aroma. Are you smelling it over there yet? <laughs> oh, see the husband's love. <laughs> so you can um, kind of see already the juices are kind of coming out here. It's not um, as much as they will. But that's going to be kind of the, the basis of your broth. And um, so the other thing I like to do for flavor, if you have any bones hanging around the house from maybe you have a steak the night before or something, that's also a great way to use, um, to kind of build the, the broth flavorings. So I'll just throw this right in here, kind of Whoa. stick it at the bottom. <laughs> that's what I do, because as it cooks, it'll just kind of start building up that flavor and it's kind of a nice hybrid between making your own stock and cheating on stock and getting somebody else's. <laughs> so it's a good in between, especially on a weeknight when you don't have a lot of time to do that. <laughs> so we'll um, just kind of sear that around a little bit, but and basically just let it cook together and um, kind of build up the flavor. Um, as you come upon Thanksgiving, everybody has that really awkward guest who has so many food allergies and they cannot eat anything. This is a great recipe for that because um, you can just kind of start with sauteing your onions with whatever works for everybody. If it's um, olive oil or butter or what you want to do on that front. Um, and then just take out the cooked onions and add your vegetarian broth, add your beef broth and kind of go that direction as well. So it works really well. That way. Okay, so now we can add in our spice bowl. This one's a little big for the job today, but it works out good. Good, so we're starting to build up some nice juice in here. And then we're just gonna add water. Um, first, before we add water, I like to kind of deglaze the pan a little bit. So um, this is sh uh, sherry. Um, if you have any wine sitting around, white wine would be good. Um, you could use um, Madeira. Um, I just like it because it helps get all the burnt bits off the bottom and incorporate, incorporate that flavor in your soup. And no, it just gives a really amazing dimension that you miss if you don't use it. So even if you don't drink, um, I still recommend it because all the alcohol burns out and it really will leave you with an amazing dimension that you won't get otherwise. So I'm going to just add our water. Um, with a soup this simple, the ingredients you start with are really important because uh, that's each of those flavors um, work together to just develop more, more, um, I don't know. I guess the best way to say this is, you know, when people say, how did you make that? I might never taste that good. Say, what did you start with? I started with pluger butter. So that's going to help you out a lot. <laughs> if you start out with really good ingredients, it makes it so much more successful at the end. So same, I know, sorry. Sorry, pluger. <laughs> um, and then with the uh, water, having distilled water versus your tap water will make a big difference too, because It'll have a lot better flavor. So you're just gonna pour in water until it pretty much covers the onions. That easy to do. And um, just kind of swirl it around till you've got, um, you wanna make sure everything is well covered. Uh, I guess I probably used for maybe four onions, I probably used about 
maybe less than a cup of, of water each. Um, put a little bit more on there. And it's really important to taste at this point the flavor because you've already built up a lot of flavor. It probably doesn't look like that. <laughs> um, but if you were to taste it right now, that's where you can tell how salty it is, how um, sweet it is, and if you need to make any adjustments, this is the best time to do it. So at the end, it's a little bit too late to kind of go back on that. So I'm going to give it a good try. And it tastes pretty good. Could use a little more salt, so we're going to add that in. I'll add a little bit more broth in here of our bouillon. And this one's nice also because it gives a really rich color. Uh, if you're using a vegetarian stock, it sometimes doesn't get as nice of a, a coloring. So what you can use that works really well is um, Worcestershire sauce, uh, or you can even put a little bit of balsamic vinegar in there. It gives kind of a nice flavor and also gives that rich color. That's it, so simple. So we're gonna bring this to a boil and then uh, put it on a simmer. I know, I gotta tell you one thing, you know, for um, a lot of people think that I can make a French soup, French onion soup, <laughs> for whatever French. reason. <laughs> but you know, the aromas, the, the, the aromas are pretty unbelievable. And you know what, I, I learned a couple of tricks. You know, and I do love make, you know, French onion soup. I'm pretty good at it. And, uh, um, but how did you come up uh, into cooking? How did I come into cooking? I started cooking when I was 12 because I love cooking. <laughs> uh, I lived on a farm out in uh, the middle of nowhere. And so we had this amazing farm with beautiful produce and um, chickens. So I had a subscription to Gourmet Magazine and I would read that like the Bible and <laughs> uh, just, just start cooking anything that I could come up with. But we lived a half an hour from town. So a lot of times there wasn't a lot of um, ingredients that a recipe would ask for on hand. So we'd have to um, drive literally a half an hour for butter. So if we didn't have butter, you had to come up with a really good reason to have butter or some alternative yeah. for that. <laughs> And so that's how I that's how I learned how to cook. You know, and I, you know when I do my 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 soup, I mean, I spend a lot of time of uh, caramelizing my onions and all that. But I shouldn't do that. I mean, this is like this is fucking unbelievable. I mean, this is. You like, didn't taste it. Yet. No, but I can smell it though. You want I mean, a spoon? Like, you can taste it. But this is really good. So, um, uh, so you're using uh, uh, red onions? I use red white, onions. White onions. Uh, yellow sweet onions and white onions. Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 the, the mix is really important or, or not? I think it's important. You can certainly use whatever you have on hand. But yeah. I like the mix because uh, it just adds a little bit more dimension to the flavor. That's why That's why I like it. And I love the, the usually I do my bouquet garni, I, I tie it up with like, you know, a string and all that, you know. That works and, good. Yeah, but you know, but the, I, I, I kind of like that. This is like a well, tea. Well, see, this uh, one I didn't do so good with it today, but it has this fancy little string you can kind of do. Well, you need a bigger outside. pot and, uh, you know, like yeah. a bigger soup, you know. And, uh, they but have the, the little balls point, too yeah. or those but little the, the people, um, tea sacks. I'm sure people get the idea. I mean, that, yeah. that's like, you know, really, I never thought about it. It's pretty easy. It's kind of a, it's one of those chef secrets you learn when you're yeah. living in Napa Valley and around chefs all the time. Uh, when you think like, well, how come mine never looks that good? And well, they just kind of neaten up the spices in a spice ball and then it just leaves um, your broth really clear and beautiful. And So how long do you let, let this cook here? Well, um, I'm not going to make you guys wait that long. <laughs> um, so basically at this point, it's, it's pretty much done. It's boiling, so we're just going to simmer it off. And uh, I would let it cook for at least an hour to an hour and okay. a half. Um, to really get the flavor, but at this point, it's going to be fine if you were in a hurry. <laughs> but it really is, it tastes the best the longer you let it cook. So if we were to um, come back and check on this in about an hour, hour and a half, that's when it's the best. So if you just got home from work, Took me about ten minutes to put it together. Oh yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's so and then you go, you know, take care of your kids, go wash, the, you know, wash dishes, whatever you Were need you married? to do. I, <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful man over here. <laughs> yeah. It's nice because if you're making salad or you're making uh, whatever steaks, whatever else you're going to be doing for dinner, or you're having company over, it's one of those things you can put on the back burner. Makes the house smell amazing. You look like a superstar when everybody comes in. 
and it's already done. It's pretty amazing. I mean, like, you know, uh, to me, the French uh, onion soup, ladies and gentlemen, that's something that uh, is very peasant, you know. And I, re I remember uh, uh, back in my youth when the nightclubs were open till six o'clock in the morning and things like that. When you're coming back home, you have two things to do, you know, with your friends, you know, after the nightclubs. That was a big omelette or French, uh, the, the, the onion soup. Because I was like, <laughs> chocolate, but you know, but nothing at the level. I mean, you know, re re restaurants in, 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 in the US took the French onion soup to a different level. You know, but back then that was like a chop, 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 chop. And the only thing you wanted to have at seven o'clock in the morning before you drive back home, sober, <laughs> I know, you know, and the, you know, and, the, and that was something like to pay in your belly. And, the, and the, so that was the onion soup that was like really, you know, done around, you know, my time. I'm not that old, but you know, I'm old enough. <laughs> but you know, I was around like a six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah, that's like, you know, that's a. Uh, uh, well, uh, and onions are something you can always keep in your house because um, if you just stick them in a cool, dry place, they'll last for a month. Easily. Do you have any techniques when you cook the onions or things like that? This you, is, yeah, this is what I do. This is my favorite way that I've learned. I'm going to use this big one, that little one. I, did, I did some of those did little you ever touch ones your, earlier. Your, your, your finger? Because at six o'clock in the morning, in France, we cut our fingers, and uh, I could. It doesn't, I, you know, just, uh, it doesn't really matter. But uh, I start with the bottom. I chop the bottom of the onion off. All right. That's a pretty big chop, and then the top of the onion off. Yeah. And so that's um, just gives you a clean surface to work with. Yeah. I didn't. I did not start out this way. These are one of those things you lived with uh, when you live with chefs and you live in Napa and you're like, oh, I didn't know that is such an easier way to cut an onion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who knew? And then cut it in half and uh, and then you just have these little you layers off, yeah, to pull yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so much easier. I used to just kind of try to go for it and that's that's a pain to do. But you're getting wise. I'm getting what I try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's still so, like in the kitchen, you know, cooking and, and uh, this, you need to practice and you learn tricks. And those tricks are making you wiser. I mean, like, you know, that's how it really goes, right? I think it's, um, yeah, it does make you wiser. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you know, it's, you're not taking steps that, you know, oh, you know, it's just, it's different. Yeah, I think um, you just want to keep your, your uh, layers of the onion yeah. pretty even because then it cooks evenly. So if and you, you just, can, on, the, on the side or, or lengthwise? I like, I like to go lengthwise, but you could, you could go on the side. I like to go lengthwise because oh, yeah. then you get these um, kind of, equal yep. sizes and if if you go in the middle then you tend to get all these bits so i don't know it tends to be a little bit more uneven cool. i like the long look too <laughs> that's it so what's going on with the soup so we're doing pretty good we're just simmering here and <laughs> looks do you want to try it yeah i'll try it <laughs> here you go it's good nice color on it here <laughs> It tastes awful. Sorry, guys. This was a. I would never make another French onion soup. <laughs> I mean, oh, I may try, but that's 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 really really good. It's perfectly. I mean, like you know, it's, uh, um, it's uh, the salt and the and so you okay, just. Okay, but use... then then with Chardonnay, this is the this is the thing. You I gotta, gotta try it again then. A little bit of each, because it's the pairing that makes it really amazing. So Chardonnay, you think is uh, the, the the way to go? I, huh? Chardonnay is uh, the, the 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 one to go. I I mean, Pinot Noir works really well too, but we have Chardonnay, and I like Chardonnay with this. So. Man, if you don't like that, you don't like women. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But I can keep it. I mean, that, but that, that's that's you know, that, that's a really that's a really really good pairing. Yeah. What what is it we're drinking? Uh, Farniente Chardonnay. Can't go wrong. Funny. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> it is funny. Good. Too. So now we can just, um, I have some soup already made because I'm not going to make you wait for an hour and a half for this lovely That's awesome. And that was really, thing. really good. So uh, well, I have some already made and I'll just show you kind of how we finish it off. All right. Once this uh, ends up, whoops. Oops. Man down. One, two, three, three and a half. <laughs> So this is kind of what it looks like when it's when it's finished cooking. It's going to have a, a really ah. deep color. Ooh. It's going to have a much uh, richer color, and then the onions you can see are just kind of really, uh, really tender. And 
basically just gonna grab our little bowls here and then uh, is it pretty easy like to find bowls like that for in the, in the, on the market you know uh, uh, for uh, onion soup you people a lot of people you know I'm, I put it into the into the oven for a, a bowl yeah, that's what I usually do yeah I like these bowls because uh, they're they're bakeware. So like I got these ones yeah. at World Market, yeah. and uh, they go really well into the oven and out. Yeah. Um, if you're using just kind of your regular bowls, they sometimes don't make it yeah, in the that's oven. Cool. <laughs> so uh, you, yeah, I, I like these little ceramic ones. They work yeah. pretty good. Um, this is a big bowl, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's dinner size. <laughs> uh, so then just kind of start and put this uh, spoon right in the middle. And put it in there. We'll add a little bit more broth. Mm. Do you reduce uh, your 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 because you just you know, cover your your uh, your onions, you know, with uh, with, uh, with uh, water and broth or broth, and then you know during the course of the hour everything reduces. You know, mm -hmm. uh, um, how much liquid you trying to uh, to to keep in into the. Um... You, I think uh, well, how I started this one, I think if you have. Um, all of your onions well covered, maybe like a um, probably a fourth half of an inch above the onions even, because it will, um, when you first start your soup, you'll see so many onions and you'll think you've made way too much, yeah. but it cooks down tremendously. This is probably, um, I don't know, I probably used about eight or 10 onions yeah. when I did this one, and this would serve well on uh, about six people, five yeah. people. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm sure people, you know. I'm How sure, many people do we have here? <laughs> I'm sure people can figure out, you know, the idea. You, you got to do it like a couple of times. But, you know, following your, your instructions, you know, right there, it's just, they cannot go wrong. Yeah. Maybe like a little bit, you know, short on the on the on portions, but you know, you figure out, right? Well, yeah, depending on if you're going to be using it as an entree or kind of as a, just a soup course. Can you freeze it? Can you make like a big batch of it and put it in the freezer and uh, it you come very back at well. six o'clock in the morning and uh, it's like, yeah, 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 you hungry? Yeah. It'll and work in your refrigerator. It'll stay well for about a week. Um, you can also freeze it. I. We, we don't have that many leftovers in our house, but you know, I, uh, I, but you, you I, I do it for like, you know, I, I do it for a season. I keep it for like, you know, a fucking year. Yeah. No, it would not last that long in <laughs> my house. It might last a month if we were lucky, but, <laughs> but yes, you can freeze it theoretically. Um, okay. So then croutons, um, I like to use like, um, Bouchon baguette, um, just a nice French bread, um, it works really well if you have kind of a day old baguette, especially if you don't have company and you just have an old baguette hanging around. Because basically what you're doing is taking the moisture out of the bread. You're basically croutons, um, mm -hmm. kind of a fancy word for toast. Um, that sounds that's good. That's the fancy French good. word for hey, toast. Hey, what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, I, but I do them under the broiler, toast them on each side, then put a little bit of butter on them. And then you just kind of lay them in, in here. I, I like to have a lot of them, That's, so yeah. we can stick, let's see if we can fit three in there. Yeah. And then I use um, three kinds of cheese. So what I like to do is um, emmental. Yeah. And camote, i probably saying that wrong. <laughs> I just know how to find it in the cheese section. <laughs> and then, comte. Oh, comte, oh yeah. Comte, see it, oh, yeah. And then, uh, and then I, like, I like a little bit of Parmesan because it has kind of that nuttiness yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a little bit sweeter. The other ones are kind of like, uh, sort of like more like a Swiss cheese, I guess. Well, they are, but you know, but it brings a lot of saltiness. I think yeah. I really enjoy that natural saltiness yeah. in it. Yeah. And it, kind of an earthiness to it yeah. too. And so you just put a nice, generous amount on top of it. Oh my God. I, I, I like to go like further. I like just like I look over it. Sometimes yeah. they put a little bit at the bottom too. Be, be but... decadent, you know, it's just like, you know, this, this thing is like. Yeah. And then I usually would just, uh, especially if I'm making several of them, I would just put them under the broiler for a minute. Yeah. But we don't have a broiler, so we're gonna torch it today, which I'm really excited about. Don't bother Mike. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> we won't bring the mic. <laughs> the mic, uh, okay. Use some, use some. So we're just gonna kind of melt the cheese on top, and if you can do this in your broiler, that's of it course is, the best it way is good. to go. I, I, let me And I would just put all these bowls on a cookie sheet if you're doing four or six of them and um, stick it under your broiler, so your broiler, uh, maybe like five or six inches under the broiler. It looks awesome. I mean, like, it looks like a really, really good. 
It smells very good. Can you good. smell the cheese? <laughs> I smell a lot of things. Yeah. That's good. And that's it. It's as easy as it gets. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to, you know, to, you know, for you to have you on show here. And uh, what do you think is going to be next, uh, next, uh, next, next month? December? Well, I haven't think? decided exactly, but everything I want to show you is um, things without a recipe that you can just kind of grab from your kitchen and um, kind of come up with your own combinations pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. I like to use recipes for inspiration. So if I was making uh, French onion soup, I would look at probably three or four different recipes and see how other chefs make them. Um, because how I make it may not be what you love and um, you might like it a little saltier, a little sweeter. And the more you kind of, kind of get to see what everybody else is putting in their soup, everybody has broth, everybody has onions, yeah, <laughs> croutons sure. and cheese. And leftover T-bones and yeah. the, you know, whatever yeah. from last night. And you kind of find your own yeah. combination. Yeah. And, uh, and it's kind of funny because when I first started cooking, it kind of became this, I started cooking at 12, so it became the only thing people knew about me. And at a certain point in life, it became kind of an insecurity for me because people would always say, oh, I can't cook for you, or I, I never make it as good as you do. And, and I finally learned as an adult oh, that I, but I, I, I it's, it doesn't matter how I make it. It matters how you make it and what you love. Yeah. And just having a few of these tools to work with, um, you just can kind of keep playing around with it and be adventurous and find what it is that you love about it the most if you have the right tools to work with. That's fantastic. I mean, like, you know, I'm... It's bad that like, uh, we're doing something for like uh, Thanksgiving. I, I would love to stop by your place, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're going by uh, their uh, place. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a cookie. I'm a beauty this year. <laughs> 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 on, on, on the on the yeah, yeah, on the camera. yeah backyard brunch. Backyard yeah, Facebook that um, backslash back B brunch. On the count of three, confident cookie. One, two, three. Confident, confident cookie. cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was great! Oh, Thank you for Super. saving me!